Hello and welcome to more Nerdy Rodent Geekery. I am playing with Stargan 2 once again, of course the official TensorFlow implementation, the proper NVIDIA one so to speak, and rather than playing with the previous pre-trained networks like in the other video I did, uh, this time I am going to be preparing my own custom data set. So we've got a couple of things to do down here. So custom, create custom data sets by placing all training images under a single directory. The images must be square shaped and they must have the same power of two dimensions. Okay, fair enough. Now, it, it seems like quite a, a quick and easy thing to do, um, but this may take you a little while. So the first thing to do is actually to find some images in order to place them into a single directory. This is perhaps more difficult than you would first assume because the number of images that you need is so high. Um, essentially you're looking at more than a thousand. Uh, if you can get 20,000 or 50,000 images then that's better. So how do you go about getting that many images? Okay there's a number of different things you can do uh, but I think one of the easiest things that I found basically is just doing a data set search. Um, so you can use something like Kaggle or Google Dataset Search and they've got various filters, you know, so if you want uh, JPEGs uh, and, you know, allowing for commercial use, that's, that's what I've done here. Um, and I'm just searching for food. Um, now, you'll get lots and lots of different data sets and remember they all have to be in one directory uh, and often um, they'll be um, for recognition. Um, so you'll get training directories and, and things like that and the images may not necessarily be in one directory completely depends on each on each data set uh, some of them are some of them aren't you know they're, they're named or whatever um, so I did a really really tiny little script uh, for the food data set that I downloaded and um, that was basically just you know to go through every every subdirectory find all the JPEGs and just rename them sequentially with a little file count. So I've got everything in one directory. Fantastic. So just have a quick look at that. So there they are, you know, just naught to, uh, I think there's a couple of thousand in there. So, all right, that's 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 got our first thing. So I've got all the images under a single directory. Uh, now next, the images must be square shaped and they must have the same power of two dimensions. Okay, again, that was another little script. I just had to write this one, which is quite easy. Now, for this one, you need um, the Mograify command from Image Magic, uh, but basically, you know, just throw in the square size there, and that will go through the single directory with all the images in, um, resize them, and then cut a square out of the middle. So you get you keep the proportions of the, of the image, uh, but everything's 512 by 512. Um, I've actually been playing with a different data set recently, Flowers, um, so it's set up for a different one uh, rather than the food. Um, if we have a look, another look back in here, so we can go through these. So these are all 256 by 256 square. As you can see, every image exactly the same size. There's, there's, you don't see these borders popping out anywhere because if you've got anything in there that isn't exactly the same size as all the other images, you know, all have to be the square powers of two. Um, it's going to not work. You're just going to fail. Um, the command will stop and say, no, you, you've done it wrong. I've managed to, managed to import some images, but it doesn't actually work. So, it should, should work nicely. Um, so this is the command from here, the custom um, dataset creation. So it's basically, basically running their dataset tool, uh, create from images, and then uh, your dataset and um, the images you've just downloaded. So just a little note, if you don't already have a datasets directory, you know, you may have to make one. Uh, I've made one here already, uh, custom datasets food. Um, and so all I have to do is basically run this. Oops, got that one. It's my custom one. So that's doing the local datasets directory. That's where it's going to create the TF records and it's doing it from those food images in my data sets food yeah so it's going through all those and this will take a couple of seconds and I will see you on the other side okay great so we've got our images there they're all uh, all been turned into TF records so now we can start to do some training there's 
few little things you can do to make the training go differently. Um, now, obviously the two different configs, so the, the thing that worried me obviously the most was config F. If I want to do 1024 by 1024, I'm going to have to have 13.3 gigs of VRAM. Um, and I, I don't, I don't have a Tesla V100. Um, I've only got eight gigs. So, yeah. So the the Config E's seem to use, um, you know, less time. So that that seemed quite good. The Config E there, 35 days. Config F there. So it seems about half the time, but the the memory's still the same, and that's that's my main problem. So um, I had a little play, and it looks like you can get away with, uh, I'm, I'm using a 1070 with 8 gig of RAM, uh, and it seems to work. So there's a few things you can play with um, to actually get it working, which means delving into your favourite text editor of choice. Uh, now one thing is the train image snapshot ticks, um, which I've got set to 2 here, uh, that's set to 10 by default. Now on my tests, um, I found that a tick took <laughs> about 53 minutes um, which means that 10 times 53 minutes was every time that you were getting a pickle file created uh, which may be too long so I, I dropped it to two anyway uh, and then you can sort of see uh, every couple of hours rather than every 10 hours um, what's going on so that's that's quite good um, and there's also this uh, mini batch size and mini batch GPU base now because I have so little RAM, uh, I've dropped these down, so I've got the default there is 32 and the default is 4, basically cut those in half. Um, and I found that using a 512 by 512 image, um, I was only using 6 gig um, of RAM, so that, that seemed to be okay. That seemed to be okay. Um, normal system memory went up and up, that used about 20 gig uh, of my normal RAM, uh, but it, it didn't... Uh, it didn't do the normal GPU memory overflow thing, so that was quite good. So yeah, still playing with the mini batch and GPU base, um, but it looks like I can I can train 512 by 512 images. Uh, so I wouldn't worry too much about the memory because uh, you can you can play with it a little bit. Now, obviously, the other thing that can go wrong is something goes wrong. Uh, you know, like it crashes or whatever, or you have to stop it, or I don't know, there's, there's so many different reasons. So if you want to carry on training, um, this is the same thing, curiously enough, as transfer learning. So um, you can take another pickle and you can resume training from that, so to speak, with your data set, which is what I've done with uh, another data set, Flowers. Um, which will be coming out soon. There's a couple of videos there. Um, so yeah, um, you can get some, some interesting things there. Uh, and if you want to carry on um, from a previous pickle or, or do the, the transfer learning, it's the same thing. Uh, in the training directory, there's the training loop.py file, which I've got open here already. And there's a few things I've I've played with in here, like the uh, global mini batch size and GPU base again as well, uh, but more importantly, the resume down here. Um, so we've got none is the default, so it will basically start training uh, from scratch, or if you want to resume, you know, you can just put the, the, the pickle path in there, uh, and then when you start training, um, it will carry on from the previous loop. So that's all you need to do really um, apart from running the the training command and leaving it to run for several hours so if we just uh, I'll copy this one here for example uh, these are these ones here so training networks um, obviously that's to reproduce their particular ones but we're doing a, a custom um, data set so the custom data set can make that a little bit bigger so you can see, um, so that's running that run runtraining.py, uh, one GPU, because I'm just running it on my home computer. Uh, the datasets directory, that's that directory I made earlier. Still doing config f. Uh, the dataset custom food, that's the, the dataset we made up there. And metrics equals none. Metrics equals none sort of makes it seem to run a little bit faster. 
Uh, but that's about it. So if we fire one of those off, it will do its thing. And then you just leave it for about two or three days uh, and come back and you'll, you'll have some pickle files in your results directory. Luckily, of course, I've, I've run this already. So just while that's doing its thing, <laughs> uh, we'll just pop into our Stargen 2 results directory. Now you see them appear sequentially in here. So this is the one that I've just been running now, the, uh, the food config. You look at a previous one. So here you get the network snapshot pickle. And uh, you also get a couple of, of PNG. So you can see uh, this is like this is only a couple of hours into transfer learning. Uh, but you can see it's already sort of managing to pick out um, some fairly reasonable looking images there. Um, this is what they, they should look like in reality, so to speak. Those are the reels, so they're they're pretty they're pretty good. You know, you can see that there's there's a lot more detail in the reel, so you know it's got a lot a lot of work to do with these fakes. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much all there is to it. So there you go. You sit you sit there. You leave it. It, it goes training, and then uh, you get a tick like this. So I've got some example ticks from my uh, Founders Edition GTX 1070. So you see each tick there was roughly about 53 minutes. Um, GPU memory 6.8. That, that was my initial test on this food data set, two, uh, 256 by 256 with the default Stargan settings. Um, so dropping those settings by half uh, allowed me to go to 512 by 512 images and still have the the same amount of GPU memory usage uh, so that that does that did seem to work proportionally it, it was it was fairly reasonable I haven't gone to 1024 um, images yet just to just to see how long that would take uh, but there you go a quick introduction uh, looks like you can do 512 by 512 just by playing with the, uh, the old parameters in there a little bit and uh, yeah enjoy some unsupervised machine learning of your own. Have fun, Rodent out.